Hey guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. Today we're going to be talking about components in SDS2, why they're important, how they're different from parametrics, and how you should be using them to make your job easier every day. All that and more today on the Steel Forum. I actually don't know what I'm doing. That's just the way of it at this point. I don't understand. Oh, I hit a skip. Hey! Do for 2018. They fixed it. So I'll have to cut that part out. Yes, I guess you will. Okay, so what I want to kind of demonstrate is using a parametric to plug in this cat plate for an HSS beam, and then we'll go back and demonstrate it using a component to show how it's a lot more powerful to use the component instead. Awesome. All right, so if we go ahead and run this uh, HSS cap PY, pick my tube, quarter inch cap plate, both ends. All right, so you see I've got a cap plate on each end of this now. Right, and at the time, that right there, great. Yeah, okay. and at the time, that's fantastic. Now the, uh, the revision monster comes along, and oh, this is a six by six by quarter now. Super. Well, that sucks. So what do you do? Well, if you go to edit this, it's just a material. Now you're going to have to graphically edit it. And if this happens all over the place, if section sizes change all over, that's a lot of work. No, it's bueno. Yeah. So you can erase it and do it over again. And that's the way that we used to have to do it. But let's go ahead and put it back. If we run the component, uh, first of all, there, there's a couple different things I should point out about components that are handy tricks. One, there's a keyboard shortcut for it is AC, add component. Simple enough, right? Mm -hmm. Second, there's a difference between pre and post selection as far as what you're going to see. So without anything selected, if I type AC, I get every component I have available. And then I have to pick the component and then pick the member. And if it's not compatible, I get grief about it. But if I pre-select that beam and type AC, now I only get the components that can be applied to that particular beam. So I'm going to go ahead and run my HSS cat plate. Quarter inch at both ends. Bam. All right. Cat plate. Excellent. And cat plate. Now, revision monster comes along again. Six by six by quarter. Evidently, I mistyped. Yes, I did. I don't even want to look. Boom. Cat plate is automatically updated. Any size I make this, it's just going to update it. Now, if I haul off and rotate the thing, it still updates it. Yeah, and that just that little bit of power is huge. Especially, uh, we'll, we'll show more components too. So let's let's go now that we've explained the differences between the two. Let's show them, uh, for instance, how about the nailer holes component? Okay, so the nailer holes component. You get a lot of toys with this one. So you can shoot top flange, bottom flange, and web. You pick your beam gauge, you set your hole diameter, you can stagger it or not stagger it. And sometimes we'll get different things where we get a, a bolt diameter to use in the top flange, but a different one to use in the web. So you just run another component. So in this case, if we plug this in, and I'm just going to let it run with its defaults, and we'll see what it does. Okay, so we get those holes. Run it again. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm looking for nailer holes, not beam nailer holes. So I turn this off, I go to the web, and now I get a couple more options as far as how to plug it into the web. So let's go, this is a big beam, we'll go six inches down, and well, let's go three inches for the row spacing. So I get a bunch in here, and we'll go one foot for the space to stagger, and let's get some bigger bolts in there. We'll go one inch diameter so we can really see the difference. And it updates the whole diameter as well. Plug that in, and I get an improvement. Yeah. And one of the big reasons that this component for us was such a game changer um, is that a lot of times the engineers misspecify 
the type of stagger that they want because they think that a 12 inch stagger means that they get holes at six inches on center when really the the, the correct call out would for that would be six inches on center stagger um so we've had a lot of drawings come back from review where they've marked up our staggered dimension we have to go through and edit this on 100 beams and with the component you just grab all the components do a multi-edit and fix them all at once right now when you're dealing specifically with nailer holes and really i think it's any component that has to do with holes uh, you can't just select the holes and get the component. So over here, if I select this, if I even hover over it, you'll see that it's highlighting the component. That's what I'm selecting, so I'll get both cap plates. But here, I won't actually get the component. I get the hole. Okay? So what you need to do for that is you need to select the beam, and if you drill down, you can actually pick the component that you're after by selecting it this way. Now I'm just going to test this. I have not played with this, but if we set to custom components, yeah, so you still can't select holes, nailer holes, or OSHA safety holes in that regard. So you'd have to either, so you would have to either edit the member and locate that particular component through the member edit screen or you'd have to select it off the tree so the holes in particular are, are a little bit more of a pain as far as doing a multi-edit okay so what i'm going to try now is i'm going to actually copy this beam with the component attached and then see if we can multi-edit both components by selecting them both because they're not an, holes yeah it's an important thing to watch out for you too because by default, when you're copying members, it does not copy the components. You have to tell it specifically to copy the component. Correct. And I should point out, we'll go into the user options real quick. I will show that. Uh, so this checkbox is what's going to determine your default setting within that member copy. So why would you? Why do you have that turned off? So I have that turned off because if I'm copying a bunch of beams... I have a tendency more often than not to want the beam itself or the, or the member itself and not bring the component along for the ride. So I would rather manually check the component copy if I'm going to use it and have it off by default. But yeah. it really depends on your preference. Whatever you're going to do more of, let that be your default. Yeah. Well, and we ran into a problem with it too using the surfaces component, if I remember correct. Yeah, yes. Where it, yes. When it goes to reprocess it doesn't ask you for that input again and it might be basing it on different things it's an idiosyncrasy specifically with that component but i imagine it applies to others as well yeah i, I believe it's it was considered a bug and again you know we, we run into a bug and we don't we just avoid it for the rest of our lives so this was something we discussed with them in 2016 or 2017 uh, and it was a bug with the surfaces component specifically as far as how it was copying over so it's possible that's been resolved, but I haven't gone back and played with it. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy the member. And this is where you want to check off that copy components if you want them to copy or turn it off if you don't. So I will copy this comp or member down. And now... Now, I should be able to select both components and multi-edit these. So if I needed to make these all half-inch, they can all become half-inch, and we can make it even more obvious than that. Let's go three inches. Now you can really see how stupid it looks. But now you can absolutely tell that I can multi-edit any component aside from the ones with the holes in them. And I probably wouldn't mess with multi-editing surfaces connection either. But these sort of material adds, um, the stiffeners, the cap plates, outriggers, you should be able to multi-edit these without much issue. All right. As stiffeners is one of the most frequently used ones, let's just show them that, just a quick example of how those work. Sure. So we are going to get beam stiffeners beam. Now, there's a bunch of different varieties on stiffeners. There's beam stiffeners beam, beam stiffeners column, column stiffeners beam, and column stiffeners column. We'll get into that in another video. But for now, we're going to use Beam Stiffener's Beam. 
And let's just start off with a fixed spacing. And I'm going to kind of leave everything sort of standard here. So we'll go single stiffener, both sides of the beam. Uh, four foot spacing is a little tight because I don't think I got much room on here. So we'll go with a one foot six spacing. Three eighths, full depth. Looks good. All right, run it. So there we go. So now we've got some stiffeners. Now it's got an auto width function to it where it'll set it to something convenient and doesn't stick beyond the toes. You can modify that along with all the other settings. And the cool thing is here is you just modify it and it's it's done. It's fixed for all of them. Yep. So if I need to change the spacing, I can just adjust this and I'll get revised spacing. Now, if I change that beam length, will that update as well? Yes. So let's go ahead and I'll delete this. So if you're using some sort of an auto spacing, it will continue that spacing and it just reprocesses with the member. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And if I even go in and set, say, a minus dimension of minus five feet, made it even longer, it will extend it for that length. Now, if I go the other way and shorten it, it should also recognize that. And you don't have a bunch of stiffeners hanging off in space like this like you might you would have if you had done with a parametric all right guys sorry about that rough cut at the end there we started to dig a little bit too deeply into the stiffeners component we're going to save that for another video in fact we're going to have several videos coming up with more in-depth explanation of the different components and how you should be using them also coming up we're going to have a conversation with our good friend james mckinnon he's written several of these components he uses them every day in his work so we're going to talk to him a little bit about the process of creating these components and how it can really help you in your day-to-day so if you want to see that, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Let us know down in the comments what kind of components you'd like to see or any other tips you need to hear. We hope to see you soon here at the Steel Forum.